Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Viator by Three Rivers Manufacturing. First off, though, uh, quick disclaimer, this was uh, sent to me as a loan review sample by the manufacturer, although I ended up buying it, so, uh, well, whatever. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this was sent to me from them directly, and so we have to assume that, A, this is the best quality controlled Viator ever, and B, you know, I've done my best to not let this affect my uh, my review, but, you know, full disclosure, keep it in mind. Um, Next thing, size comparison here. This is a nicely sized knife in my estimation. Um, you can see here that uh, in terms of overall blade length, it's a little tiny bit longer than the Rat 2, um, uh, but in terms of sharpened blade length, uh, the, the divide is, well, actually, they're fairly similar here. Here it is against Spydeco Delica, Ontario Rat number one, which is a much bigger knife in general. Then finally, we'll compare against the Spydeco Chaparral, which has, um, again, it's winning on both overall and sharpened blade length. So there you go. Um, that that that's the size here. Next thing to highlight is that this is using the uh, same mechanism as the Three Rivers Nomad, which is actually very similar to the uh, Spydeco Pits as well as um. The, uh, oh, there's a little thing from Sp the Spartan Nymph, uh, Spartan Bladeworks Nymph that I've also reviewed here. What you can see here is that there is a little back strap here that when you pull the blade out, starts to lift up. And this is, you know, titanium. And you can see this in the disassembly video more clearly. But then as you hit the half stop, it kind of falls back into place. And then as you pop it back up, opening the blade again, then it falls back down. What this means is that this is a non-locking knife. I don't have to apply, you know, there's no button, there's no line of lock, there's no lock at all on it. The only thing that's keeping this open is the lack of pressure on the back side here. But it does actually take a substantial amount of pressure to close this guy. Um, you know, take a look at this. This is not something I generally advocate doing, but this is not something that your average slip joint is necessarily going to pass. Um, and so you've got a fair amount of uh, beef to it here, but at the end of the day, it will shut as soon as you apply the pressure on the back there. Then finally, the name. Honestly, I have no idea what this is named after. I'm assuming it's not the small town in Andalusia, Spain. Um, but that, that's the only thing I know that Viata can mean. So uh, there, 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 there you go. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your three rivers Viata here. So first off on the good side, um, this is a nice, uh, one nice option that this gives you is the easy swapping of scales and spacer. So for instance, I ordered this guy with a titanium back spacer in the blue and the uh, carbon fiber overall scales here, but the thing is you can very easily swap these scales out. Um, in fact, the, the, the budget configuration comes with a nice grippy G10 here, and in order to swap the scales out, you literally need to loosen this screw, this screw, and this screw. Then on the back side, you take off the clip and then loosen those three screws. You don't need to undo the pivot. You don't need to get into the knife in any kind of structural sense. All you need to do is pop those screws off and then drop the scale on over the pivot, and then you, you, you're good to go. And this means that it's very, very easy to uh, custom this knife to your liking, so to speak. They offer many varieties of G10 scale. They're all reasonably thin. I mean, they, it's a nice little detail there, and it makes it possible to have this knife in basically whatever color you'd like, which is pretty good. I, I appreciate that very much. Um, next thing, uh, the ergonomics on this knife are very, very nice. Um, because it is a relatively tall knife, even though it is thin, it fits well in the hand. The clip is well designed so that it doesn't provide major hot spots or anything. The thumb, by the way, sorry about the thumb, freaking steel wheel uh, resident thumb disc cut me open. Ay, ay, ay. But anyways, uh, not on this knife, certainly. But it, it fits nicely. You've got a nice area for the thumb here. The overall curvature of the knife sort of going on an arc in this dimension is really nice overall. Very, very nice. And it's rounded well. You can see here they've got some nice chamfers at the edges. Of the, the, it's just, it's well done there. Next thing in the pocket, this is beautiful. Because, well, for a couple of reasons. First off, it is actually pretty damn lightweight put down my uh, little scale here, we can see that this guy's coming in at 2.6 ounces. Ounces? That's a lot like an ounce, but ouch, because I hurt my finger. I don't freaking know. Uh, but anyways, it comes in at 2.6 ounces here for a uh, for a, about 3-inch blade, and so that means it is like super lightweight. But it's also got a very nice clip with plenty of ramp here, and it is very thin in the pocket, which I appreciate very much. Speaking of that clip, you can see here that we can swap that clip over to the other side. And that makes this knife fully ambidextrous. That's right, because it is a slip joint. There is no lock mechanism that needs to be operated handedly. This knife is perfectly, you have exactly the same experience as a lefty with this knife as you do as a righty. Uh, you just 
flip the clip around and there, there, there you go. And so I appreciate that always very much. And this is a case where they absolutely, they needed to put that on the other side there. So they are appealing to the lefty market. So that's good. Excellent. Um, next thing, this does offer a pretty compelling option to people dealing with some stupid laws. Non-locking knives are not something that I generally recommend when people have options. Um, you know, they, they, they can work fine. They can definitely be safe. And especially with this kind of a s exceptionally safe, stiff spring and such, um, it, it, it's fine. But generally, Generally speaking, people buy these knives because some scared politician or another has decided that the best way to, I don't know, appeal to his voters is to, 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 to ban things. And so um, this gives you a non-locking blade, which is important in places like the UK. It gives you a three-inch blade, which is pretty great and comes in under a bunch of legal lines, and it is not easily one-hand openable, it is not remotely flicky. There is no way that you can do one of these things with it. I mean, maybe if you've got freaking adamantium fingernails and, you know, crazy superhuman strength, maybe, but not necessarily. Um, but this is a very, very legal knife. It's not quite as legal as the Nomad coming in with this bigger blade here, um, but at the same time, it is, it's a profoundly legal piece, and that's, that's going to be good. Yet at the same time, it is a very safe knife in my estimation. Very often, slip joints, at least to me, can be a little bit borderline scary, um, just because I'm worried it's going to shut on me. But the thing is, this spring is very, very stiff. I mean, seriously, I am putting non-trivial amounts of force on that before it even gets to the point where it half stops. And it does half stop, which is another safety feature. But the other thing is, I mean, take a look at this. It's got this little uh, sharpening choil here, which is great independently. But if you're cutting with this guy and it starts to close, what's going to happen is that that, that sharpening choil is going to catch on your finger here. Yeah, you might get a little bit of a love nip here off of the edge of the blade, but that's going to stop it before it slams shut onto your finger. So um, especially if you're using this in a very choked up sort of way, this is really not going to be a problem. And then it's got the half stop on there as well, which is nice both for closing and for overall safety. So I feel like even though this is a slip joint, it's not any less safe to use on a regular basis than a uh, locking knife, which is great. Yet at the same time, it is pretty easy to open. They've given you a nice big hole here that you can grab onto. You get plenty of purchase from both hands, both sides. And, uh, you know, some people can even do it one-handed. I'm not one of those, especially with a damaged thumb at the moment, but I, I'm sure, uh, you know, someone posted an Instagram video where you can. Then, um, uh, two other things. It is nicely finished. I like this carbon fiber a lot. It doesn't look stickery. It is real, honest to God, carbon fiber, to the best of my knowledge here. Um, and then it is, yeah, you can see the carbon fiber flies throughout. Um, but it's also got this nice little three-line motif, which they've carried through into the G10 scales here, which is kind of cool too. Um, although technically there were more than three rivers on this guy, so uh, uh, whatever. I'm not. I'm not judging too much. But no, I see. You've got that nice little motif on there. You've got the. Um backspacer on this guy is very, very nice as well. You can see here they've cut in little grooving, but it's very precisely done. It fits into place very nicely. Everything fits on the whole beautifully. The color of the clip here, this, uh, that, 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 that's just nice. And honestly, I, you know, this is just a well-made knife. Uh, TRM, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a company that's made a lot of knives for a lot of different people, although under circumstances where they can't discuss it. It's an OEM sort of thing. And it's nice to see that they're able to put in the same quality on their own uh, when they're doing their own work. And so that, 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 that's great. Then finally, um, on the good side here, this has a pretty compelling base price. With the G10 scales instead of the carbon fiber, this comes in at $140 a, a baseline price. And I think for some, being something that is relatively specialized here with a nice steel, with a nice blade, with great construction, etc., you know what, that's, that's a fine freaking price. As it's configured exactly here with the carbon fiber, which is a little extra, and the titanium backspacer, rather than a conventional sort of G10 backspacer, which I will show you here. Um, rather than a conventional uh, G10 backspacer, you're coming in at 184 it makes it obviously a little pricier, but it also makes it way classier in my estimation. I like the carbon fiber version a lot more than I like the G10. So um, there th 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 you go. I think that's a pretty reasonable price for something that they're not going to sell a bazillion of. So um, there you go. That's the good, is that it has a very nice price to it. It is nicely finished, nicely built overall. It's easy enough to open despite being exceptionally safe as a uh, slip joint sort of knife. Um, it offers a great option for people dealing with stupid laws against uh, locking knives. It carries beautifully, has great ergonomics, and I do like the fact that you can swap these scales in so easily with 
even very basic Torx kind of tools and that anyone can do it without taking the full thing apart. Um, let's uh, talk about what's great. And to me, the greatness here is in this blade 100%. This is a beautiful blade. Um, it is thin. I mean, seriously, if we look at this guy stock thickness wise, we are actually thinner than the Spydeco Delica, yet with a really tall flat grind on this guy. Um, that makes it absurdly slicey. This is a knife that will cut and will cut and will cut and will cut, and that's great. The steel that it's made of is CPM 154, which is a really nice steel. It's roughly equivalent to your RWL 34s, etc. Um, it's a very, very similar uh, steel to those, but it's a great steel. It has really nice characteristics. Honestly, I like it as an all-arounder sort of thing. It's pleasant enough to shop, and it holds an edge pretty well. That That's good. The blade shape on it is pretty damn good as well, um, because you get some point, you get some flat, you get some belly here. And, you know, it's it's well enough shaped that you can still do kind of utility cuts. It came very, very sharp to me. And you know what? Even the blade's got this very nice reflective sort of finish here, which is pretty excellent. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. And so, um, to me at least, that's what's great about this knife 100% is this blade. Um, that's absolutely excellent. So uh, there you go. That's the great here. On the bad side, um, first off, the construction on this guy is not using the same bushing as the Nomad. The Nomad is uh, had a, a Sebenza-style pivot bushing in the middle there. This guy is built a lot more like your average pocket knife, and so that's, that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. It's fine, but it's not quite the same thing. So uh, as you saw in the disassembly, it's different. Next thing, there is a little tiny bit of recurve right here in the middle of the edge. I assume that was just a little bit of an, oh, you know, spent a little too long at the fair and sharpening right there. Whatever. It's not a big deal, but it's certainly something I can see them uh, working on in the future because that'll make it a little more difficult to work on this with sharp stones, at least initially. Next thing, in terms of your blade length, I'm actually showing this guy coming in, depending on how you want to measure it and, you know, exactly where you're coming from, but I, I show this guy as coming in right around, if not slightly on top of three inches. And what I'm, the, the problem with that is that very often, uh, when you have a legal line in the sand of three inches, if you're right on top of it, if you're like 3.005 or even, you know, something like that, I'm, well, let, let me put it this way. This knife is only as legal in those situations as the cop is angry with you. Um, I, it is just as justifiable, I think, to call this a knife that is under three inches as it is to call it a knife that is over three inches. That's not necessarily something you want. And so if you're making a knife that's designed to be super legal, I, I generally recommend that people come in under that line, you know, the 2.95 sort of thing. That way there is no universe in which this is over three inches, whereas this one could very easily be if the cop wants to really, you know, mess you up there. And then finally, um, on the bad side, I'm just not a fan of this logo particularly at all. It's it's not doing so hot. Um, you know, honestly, it looks like a big mole on the blade. I get it. It's their logo, and I I understand why they don't want to put it on the handle, because it might not mill in there well. But honestly, at some level, I, I would like this knife a lot more without that logo on there. I mean, I look at this and I'm just like, oh, you should show that to a doctor. I'm I, not a fan of that whatsoever. And I think, frankly, they'd have been just fine using this on the back here. DRM USA is made in the USA. Did I mention that? And so that's that's something I'm not a big fan of, really, whatsoever. Um, and then, uh, finally, wait, did I already say finally? I didn't quite mean it. Um, but the other issue that this guy has is that the pivot has a tendency to back out a little bit, um, meaning that it tends to loosen up over time with you. So I'm going to try a slightly more aggressive application of Loctite on this guy after I finish this review here. But um, it, it does have a tendency to loosen as you're using it over and over and over again over time. That's something I hope they're going to work on in the future there, and it's something that can absolutely be solved with more or, uh, you know, more use of Loctite, but that's not something I'm super in love with, and so that's the bad to me, is that the pivot tends to back out a little bit. The logo looks like a doctor needs to take a look at it. Um, it's showing this guy right around three inches, maybe a little bit above, and that means that this is a potential felony, depending, you know, on how the cop wants to measure. Um, the edge has a little tiny bit of recurve, and the construction isn't using the same bushing system as the Nomad, but that's not a big deal, particularly. On, on the ugly front, there's only one thing, and it ain't that ugly, but it does kind of just drive me a little nuts, and that's that they are using four different fastener types on this guy. They are using a T10 uh, bit here for the pivot itself. They are using a T8 uh, for the uh, clip screws here. They're using T6 for these screws over here, and then underneath there, they're using Phillips head screws. 
This is completely inconsequential. And I'm a firm believer that any person who's in the knife hobby seriously should end up with, you know, a, a set of, you know, a multi-bit set, you know, along these lines here. So you're always going to be okay, no matter what's get thrown at you. But guys, come on. That's a little much. Um, and so I hope that they're able to find some way to, you know, get everything to T8 at some point or something like that. I, it, it, is it really, really a problem? Is it really ugly? No, but it, does drive me a bit nuts, but I'm already a bit nuts, so no big loss there. So, um, that's the uglies, that they're using four different fastener heads somehow. Um, final conclusions, this is a very nice little knife. I mean, it offers a very compelling non-locking option. It's an easy, lightweight sort of carry. It offers very quick customizability and a super slicey little blade. And it's at a pretty reasonable price, all, all told. Given that they're not going to sell a bazillion of them, and given that it is pretty damn well made and finished, I'm pretty happy with it at that price point. Um, but maybe more telling is that there's just not that much wrong with it, this guy. I mean, maybe the blade is a little tiny bit long for what I'd like to see, Legally speaking, the logo does need to see a dermatologist. Uh, they are absolutely exemplifying the, the spirit of diversity in their hardware choices, and I, I hope that they're able to get that pivot so it stays put a little bit better. But, you know, honestly, that's that's really my, that's the sum of my objections here. Mostly, I feel like this is a really solid tool. I mean, the three-inch blade is enough tool for most tasks, in at least in my life. And it's a non-locking knife that, honestly, I didn't ever feel like, God, I wish this thing locked. Um, which is, is great, because it's safe enough, it's strong enough, and honestly, the blade is thin enough, this is slicey enough, that uh, I didn't feel like I was having to use that much effort for the kinds of cutting I do. And that's very often where I feel like a non-locking knife is scary, is when I'm trying to use a lot of effort while cutting. That that gets pretty ugly pretty quickly. Uh, and of course, not everybody is looking for a non-locking knife, that is 100%. And there were a number of nice options there. I mean, you should also consider the Nomad by Three Rivers. Consider the Spyderco UKPK, Urban, Rody, etc. Also, the Hinderous Slip Joint is a nice thing to consider there, but a much more expensive one. But the thing is, if you're looking for something that is very, very lightweight and carryable, very customizable, nicely made, and an absolutely solid working tool, I think the Viata will absolutely be a gem for you and will be a viable... Eh? body a collection. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, that I didn't slip up too badly in this review, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.